22, verse 22. Last week, uh, if you were here on Mother's Day, congratulations to all our mothers. And hope you all had a good day and, and you were spoiled and taken care of and all that kind of good stuff. And so, happy Mother's Day to you all. Uh, again, also Father's Day is coming up. Uh, I know Gabe mentioned, but man, guys, you don't even have to be a golfer, but you need to come uh, and be a part of it. It's going to be a good fellowship day on June uh, 15th, Sunday afternoon, 4 p.m. at Three Pines, uh, west of Union there in uh, Tolona. I believe it is anyway, so it's right off of Highway 6 uh, right there, and so we're going to have a good time, uh, weather permitting, of course, and so keep that in mind. Invite your friends, uh, your father-in-law out to the service. We'll be doing some drawings and things of that nature. Uh, someone had mentioned, I think it was uh, uh, Gabe and Kelly, thought it would be nice to get away a used barbecue grill, and so uh, we thought that would be <laughs> <laughs> we thought that'd be nice, you know. Yeah, you, just, well, you know that way you know it works. That way you know it works. And so anyway, uh, but no, anyway, we're gonna be giving away some do some drawings and stuff, and and uh, and also congratulations to our newest uh, resident nurse, Kelly Hayter. Amen. Amen. Kelly, nurse Kelly. Nurse Hayter, nurse Hayter, report to report to pediatrics, please. Nurse oh Hayter. no. No, no pediatrics. Uh, nurse Hayter, report to the sixth floor. Sixth floor, please. <laughs> Yeah, that's an inside joke. If you don't, if you weren't here for the revival with Robbie Mitchell, you will not get that. But if you were, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The sixth floor. <laughs> um, anyway, so uh, Amen. Matthew chapter 14 and verse 22. Let's begin reading uh, there this morning. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat. This is after defeating the five thousand. All these people were around. Jesus sends his disciples us to get into the boat. And go and, and to go to before him to the other side. Everybody say the other side. Yeah. The other side, while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain uh, by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth uh, watch of the night, Jesus went to them, the disciples who were in the boat, uh, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Uh, do not be afraid. And Peter, verse 28, And Peter said to him, uh, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he, Jesus, said, Come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried out saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when he had gone uh, into the boat, the wind ceased. Then, everybody say then. Then. Then, those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, Jesus, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Let's pray. Father, I do thank you this morning for your word. I ask today, God, that you just, uh, that, that the anointing, that you would speak, use me as a, as a vessel, as cracked and as flawed as I may be, God, use me to speak your word that is truth, that is holy, that is righteous, that is always, always true, in season, out of season, God. Yeah, use this morning, God, your word to transform lives and to bring uh, encouragement uh, and direction to our lives. God, I pray and I ask it all in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Last week, uh, uh, I was, uh, during Mother's Day, uh, the title of my message was, <coughs> that's a question. Let it the be. title of the message was Let It Be. Let It Be. And, uh, and so I want to kind of continue with that emphasis uh, according to uh, uh, Mary said when the angel said to her, uh, how, or when she asked the angel, how will this be that I will be found with a child? And, and the angel replied, he said, the power of God, the, the most high, the shadow of the most high will come upon you and you will be the child and he will be called the son of God. And so on and so forth. And then Mary said to the angel, she said, let it be, let it be unto me. Brenda and Shannon, good to see you guys. Y'all snuck in on me. I see Jonah and I wasn't even paying attention. Amen. Stand up. What did you do to your hair, girl? <laughs> Amen. It's good to see you guys. Amen. Give them a round of applause. They're down from Lisa Ann. Lisa Ann down there. Amen. 
Sam, uh, Brenda and Sam used to work with us in Children's Church, and, and of course Joe did. And so good to see you guys. I knew you guys were coming back, but surprise, we're here. So amen. Good to see you guys. Amen. And uh, so anyway, uh, so Mary said, uh, uh, "Let it be unto me according, according uh, to your word." And so I want to kind of continue uh, with that theme uh, here this morning uh, with, with Let It Be, part two, if you will. Uh, uh, but nonetheless, so we find that Jesus, uh, there, there was just a, 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 a massive miracle that takes place. Jesus feeds 5,000, not including women and children. And, and then he tells his disciples, get in the boat. We're all familiar with this story. We've probably heard it a hundred different times. But I want to point out some things this morning uh, to encourage uh, you here today about letting it be. Uh, in your life, because it's it's sometimes it's just kind of like, well, yeah, I'll let it be, God, according to your word, right? You know, well, I mean, who, as a Christian, who would who would deny the fact that I want God to have His way in my life? Who would say otherwise? You know, but actually thinking it and you know saying it, but actually letting it is due to a different thing. Because if we're going to let God have His way in our life then there are going to be some things that might be a little uncomfortable for us in the flesh. Right. See, because, because what God does in our lives makes no sense to us, let alone anybody else. Right. Amen. Uh, the transformation that takes place in our life confuses people because they don't understand with many people, it's like, well, you know, the, you know they went and got religious. Right. Yeah. They got a little bit of religion, but you and I know as born-again, spirit-filled believers, that we have anything other than religion. Amen. Christianity, let's not mistake, it is a religion, but it is based upon a very different principle and truth than any other religion. Are you with me? And so, so that being said, if we are going to let it be in our lives, we have to be prepared for the fact that many times throughout Scripture, when God comes to a man or when God comes to a woman and says, thus saith the Lord, this is what I'm going to do, my word declares it, so on and so forth. It's not going to be, most in most cases, it's not always a favorable set of circumstances that God births His purposes in. Are you all with me this morning? Yes. Most times throughout Scripture, it is not, there are not always favorable circumstances surrounding the call and the purpose of God that He puts upon our lives. Right. Just, just go like this and so I think you're with me. Just do this, okay? So here we have Peter and the disciples. Watch this. They are obeying God. They are in the will of God. Are you with me? Yes. Jesus said, get into the boat. And what did they do? They got into the boat, okay? So step one, you got to be faithful in the little things if you're ever going to do anything greater. Amen. So when God says get in the boat, get in the boat. Don't sit there and say, I don't like that boat. I don't like the way the boat looks. I like the, I like the V-bottom boat. I like the Bassmaster boat. You know, when God says get in the boat and he tells you to get in that boat, you don't sit there and argue about the boat. You and I are to obey what God tells us. That's right. Yep. All right. I'm, I'm getting more more uh, support as, as I go on. <laughs> People are getting more vocal about it. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. Okay, now watch. And so they're, they're in the will of God. They're going to the other side, and a storm arises. Okay? See, this idea that is, that is uh, kind of, you know... Uh, promoted uh, in many Christian type circles is that if you're in the will of God, man, everything just, everything's just great. It just, everything just, and it's just, oh, it's just wonderful, 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 wonderful times, you know, all this stuff. And many times through adversity and difficulties and persecution, when they arise, we think, oh, I must not be doing something right for God. Right. Yeah. And nothing could, and many times, be further from the truth. But that is the the new American gospel. <laughs> that, you know, if, if you're really, you know, if you're blessed with the Lord, you'll have a Mercedes. You'll, you know, you know, all this stuff and on and on and on it goes and so on and so forth. Um, I'm a BMW kind of guy myself. 
And so it's kind of when I'm waiting on them, like, hey, Lord, you know, you said, you know, that one preacher said I heard him say it. You know, anyway, uh, but y'all understand uh, some of that nonsense. But listen, many times, so when we're in the will of God, it's not always going to be favorable circumstances. We can't expect it to be smooth sailing all the time. Are you with me? Man, when they first took out there in the boat, they're just like, you know, they're like us. What was Gilligan's boat? The SS, who said that? Somebody knew that, a bitch. She knew that. SS men up. Is the men up? Is the men up? And here they are, they just they just think they're going out for a good time. Are you with me? We're just, we're going to go sailing. We're going on a trip. Everything, we're going to have vacation. Oh, isn't it wonderful but being a, to be serving Jesus? Oh, this is just great. And then guess what happened to the men up? It, 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 it crashed. I mean, the waves came, and then all of a sudden they ended up on a on a on an island, right? What was the island? Do they have a name for the island? Elegance Island. Duh! I'm just checking to see if you all knew. I knew what it was. I'm just making sure you are on the same page with me. And so it was Gilligan's Island. Oh, okay, it was Gilligan's Island and Island. And so so here they are. They're trapped. Let me let me tell you something. That was not part of their plan. Stay with me. That was not part of their plan. And many times when we are in, right in the middle of the will of God, we're doing what God told us to do, guess what happens? Storms happen. Amen. Things don't go according to the way we want them to. It gets a little uncomfortable sometimes. We get a little stressed out. We get a little frustrated. We get a little, what do we do? What do we do? And that's where they're at. Right in the middle of the will of God and they're freaking out. And they're like, oh, man, what well, is it? To top it all, they see a ghost. <laughs> it's like, okay, we're losing it now. You know, Elizabeth, Elizabeth, I'm coming. This is what's going on. Elizabeth, I'm coming. I'm just kind of clearing stuff. It seems kind of cluttery up here. And so I want to be able to move around freely without tripping over cords. Amen. And so, so what happens is they're right in the middle of the will of God. And things don't go according to their plan. Well, Jesus never said nothing about this. Jesus never told me. If I had known that, I wouldn't have done it. And see, that's exactly why God don't tell us a lot of times. It's because if he tells you, oh, guess what's going to happen? Right. We'd be like, I'm, I'm out. I'm checking out that one. I don't want no part of that. I don't want no part of that, right? And so that's what happens. We give a right in the middle of the will of God. Isn't it funny how people are just like, woo, in the will of God. Oh, serving Jesus. Oh, I just love it. Serving Jesus. And then all of a sudden, shh, shh. Oh, my gosh. Attacks and all this stuff are happening. You're like, oh, my gosh. What's going on? Well, I must be out of the will of God. That's the first thing that many people think. And that is so far not from the truth. We got to know. Listen. Jesus said, get in a boat. And they got in a boat. Things didn't go according to They just thought, hey, we're going to the other side. Nice little trip. And then they end up on Gilligan's Island, right? They're, you know, that's what they thought. It's a nice little trip. Let's go out. We'll have we'll go cruising. And everything will be fine. You know what? Well, let's just go to church and you know, we'll we'll you know meet some friends and, and we'll start doing stuff together and we'll, you know, it'll all just be fun, 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 happy, happy, happy. And all of a sudden then turbulence comes, troubles come, attacks come. We're just like, oh, is it this? We're in church. It, it happens. It happens. But what you end up doing on the island matters. Come on, somebody. How do you react in the middle of it? You don't jump ship. They didn't jump ship. Amen. They stayed in the boat. Come on, somebody. And so here we are. Peter. You know, you got to love Peter. Here's Peter. Peter's, they, they see him. They're all wigging out. And then, you know, Lord of a gym. You know, here's Peter. Petra. Upon I'll build my church. Come on, somebody. Upon this confession, thou art the Son of God. The guy that said, you're the Son of God, right? My sheep know my voice. But Peter's like, I just want to make sure. Jesus, if it's you, tell me to come. I mean, talk about, it. hey, you know, it's kind of like, it's kind of like how wives, how, or how husbands. I, as soon as I said it's how wives, I heard it just, <laughs> right? You know, it's kind of like, if you love me, if you love me, you go to the refrigerator and give me a glass of milk and warm it up for me. <laughs> if you love me, you know, type thing. If you love me, oh, if you love me, I like, I like to have a new diamond. <laughs> People in hell like to have ice 
ice water too. Come on, somebody. Amen. The lack of diamond apparel on your finger does not constitute or does not uh, show my lack of love. It shows my lack of funds. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Amen. So the next time you start asking your husband this, then I like if you love me. If you love me. Amen. He loves you, baby. He loves you. He just ain't got the funds for it. Come on, somebody. <laughs> I mean, my wife hasn't asked me for a new diamond recently, um, but she, anyway. So, so here they are, they're the will of God, and things start going awry. Peter speaks up and he says, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come. Jesus simply said, come, right? I mean, one word. <laughs> Jesus speaks one word. Isn't it, isn't it funny? How we as Christians, we know what God said. We know what the will of God is. We know what's right. We know what's wrong. But it's like we got to have 15 different confirmations before we'll obey God. Oh, I just, I just believe in God for a confirmation. <laughs> really? I mean, you know, there comes a point in time, you know, when Jesus says, come, or Jesus says, go, or whatever it is that God speaks to you, we ought to have the faith in the knowing of his voice. Come on, somebody. To say, this is what God said, and I don't have to have 15 different confirmations. I mean, come on. I, I can just imagine. It's, you know, I can imagine the frustration of God at times. Think about this. I have children. You with me? When I speak, they know my voice. And when I say, clean your room, <laughs> or when I say, you know, go to bed, when I say, don't get back up, isn't it funny how they got to go get confirmation with their mother? <laughs> My man said, but you know, what do you say? Come on, somebody. You don't need confirmation. You've already heard what dad has said. Come on, somebody. And so I can imagine the frustration with God at times because he'll tell us something. We, we know it's in his word. We know what's right. We know what's wrong. But yet we, we need a confirmation. We need, you know, uh, uh, the clouds to spell it out in the sky. We need a butterfly to fly by. You know, we need something, you know, that we deem as supernatural. Like the voice of God is not enough. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Like the witness in your spirit's not enough. You know, like, well, I just, you know, it's, I can just imagine the frustration. You know how many times Emma, I love her. She, oh, I love her. She is, she, she's just such a sweetheart. I, I love her. But you know how many times I got to tell her to go to bed? <laughs> she gets up. I got to go help I thought you already went. It's like, all right, that's fine. Do it, go to bed. Don't get back up. She gets back up. It's like, I'm telling you. She's like, well, I got to tell you something. What do you got to tell me? Turn the fan on. I mean, just, it's a, it's a, does anybody else have these, these struggles? Have you ever been there? You know what I'm saying? It's no different. It's no different with our Father. How many times has He said to us something? Amen. And we ask, and he says the same thing again. Listen to me. I'm not going to change my mind when it's bedtime. It's bedtime. <laughs> God's not changing his mind about some stuff, folks. It's the will of God. Do it. So here they are, Peter's out there. Out of the water, walking. I mean, that's pretty that's impressive. He's the only guy that ever did it. Come on, somebody, besides Jesus. Are you with me? He's, matter of fact, he's in the flesh. And he did it. But he's walking by faith. Come on, somebody. Amen. And so he steps out, gets down out of the boat, steps out, and all, he's just like, too long, Jesus. Oh, hey, Jesus. Now, you know, we know the story. He begins to sink. He cries out. I can only imagine what the other people in the boat was thinking. You know, show off. You know, who does he think he is? You know, they're just, they're just like, oh, I mean, I understand it. But, but listen, don't miss this. They are still in the will of God. That's right. That's right. They are still in the will of God in the boat. Are you with me? Okay. 
God spoke to Peter to get out. Not the other people. You know, I've heard, I've heard this a hundred different times. I feel sorry for the guys in the boat. Because it's like you hear messages just slam them. They just want to stay in the boat. They don't want to get... They didn't ask to get out of the boat. They were perfectly comfortable in the will of God. They might have been... Let me rephrase that. They might not have been real comfortable, but nonetheless, they were in the will of God. The, and then, matter of fact, after, after Jesus picked Peter up, he didn't say, now that you all seen my power, now that you all seen what I can do, he said, I want all of you lack of faithers to get out of the boat and come walk with me. Just leave the boat. Come on. He didn't say that. He could have. But he took Peter and put him back in the boat. See, the provision of God, the boat, is always sufficient Amen. to accomplish what he's called you to do. Amen. Never underestimate the provision, the will of God. When God says something, you do it. It's a miraculous thing. So here's, here's Peter. He gets out of the boat. He starts thinking, now I want to show us, I point some things out here that I'm going to eat. Now watch this. Y'all get going on your hungry too. Don't be lying. How many of y'all ate breakfast this morning? How many of y'all didn't eat breakfast this morning? Let me see your hand. See, these the majority of people are hungry in this room right now, including me. Okay, now watch this. Watch this. <clears throat> it says, And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those that were in the boat came and worshiped him, Jesus. No sin in worship, Peter. Right. Right. You the man! You the man! You a water walking fool, boy! Y'all think you can sit Peter, you! No. No, that didn't happen. They didn't build an aquarium and have a little floating Peter on it. Right. <laughs> we can market Peter, man. We can market Peter. Peter the water walker. We can sell aquariums little Peter's floating across the top of the water. Well, what about Jesus? Oh, yeah, well, Jesus, we know Jesus. But anyway, Peter, let's, let's market Peter. Have you seen these people? How oh, let's market this. Let's market that. Ooh, we can sell this to people. Amen. Yep. <laughs> but we'll leave that one alone, too. He says, he says, he gets back in the boat, and they came and worshipped him. Watch this. Number one, never be afraid to step out and do what God's called you to do. Amen. Okay? That's a given. But it's not easily done. Because, <laughs> uh, <laughs> ooh, I don't, ooh, I don't know. I don't feel that. swimming pool. Come on. <laughs> you know how you do it. You know when you're a little kid, everybody out there, you're like, they say, come on, just jump, just jump. <laughs> you know how you do it. Right? And so here they are. Here's Peter. He did what God called him to do. Not because he himself was so confident in his ability to walk on water. Right. That's right. Come on, somebody. Peter wasn't like, I got this. I mean, how hard can it be? Boop. <laughs> he wasn't, he, he, it wasn't, he wasn't like, I got this. Watch this, guys. See, Mary was humble. See, in order to let it be in our lives, we gotta be humble. We gotta realize. That there is nothing that you and I will ever do that has eternal value that we can do on our own. Amen. Amen. Right. Nothing. Right. You can do church and you can do this and you can do that and you can, you can think you're doing it on yourself and in your own street and some people just may very well be doing it but it has no eternal value. Because it's all about them. Come on, somebody. Amen. It's all about them. Look at me. I got this. I got, I'm good at this. See, humility says, I'm only as good as God makes me. 
See, I, I was at work uh, here. Um, it was fairly fairly early there when I started in Port, and I poured in this near Palmyra. And there's this young young guy. I may have told this story before, but for those new people here, I'll tell again. But <clears throat> so we're sitting there, and uh, this young young man, 19 years old, good young guy, good young guy, very respectful young man. And uh, anyway, we got to talking, and, and my lead guy was there. He's a Christian man, and <clears throat> so we're kind of talking. And uh, my lead guy says, "Hey, are you coming to?" Or he goes. I got a, we're having a revival at our church. He went to a church at Hamlet, or goes to a church at Hamlet. He said, we're having a revival at our church. He says, uh, are you coming to, to the young man? He's like, oh, you know, oh, you know. I was like, come on. I said, come on, man. I said, I'll go. I'll come pick you up. I said, I'll go, and I'll come get you. He's like, oh, no, I got something. I said, I just, and then we, we just kind of bantering back and forth, whatnot about it. He was teasing around. And he says, well, he goes, hey, man, he goes, I'm, I'm a good kid. And then, of course, in my preacher voice, I said, The Bible says uh, that there is no one good but God, young fella. No, I didn't say it that way. But, but I said, you know, Jesus said, because they used to call Jesus good. See, they were thinking after the flesh. Oh, look at what he's doing. You with me? Look at what Jesus is doing. Oh, he's good. He's good. Jesus told me, he said, there ain't no one good but God. Amen? Amen. Let me tell you something. You can be nice. You can be all this stuff. But I'm kind of with the Apostle Paul. And that's the only thing good in me is Jesus. Amen. Come on, somebody. Because without Jesus, I'm mean. I'm malicious. I'm hateful. I'm just without Jesus. That doesn't mean I can't be that at, on, um, at certain times. Come on, somebody. Y'all been, been in the flesh before. Come on. But I don't practice that because of who is in me. Are you with me? And so here's Peter. He's not doing it in his own. He is allowing the word. He's stepping out. We hear this. He steps out on the word of God and it's firm. It's yeah. steady. It's true. Because Jesus told him to. Are you with me? And so he steps out. He gets to walking. He, everything's fine. All of a sudden he looked around him. He starts sinking. And he cries out. Watch this. He cries out and says, Lord, save me. Save me. Lord, save me. Let me tell you something. When we speak... To God. When we cry out to the Lord, He responds to our word. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. See, isn't it funny? And this is just a, a lancism, but isn't it funny how Peter responded to the Lord's word and the Lord responded to his? Amen. That's just a little food for thought. You can chew on that and spit it out later if you don't like it. to sink and he cried out and said Lord save me the Lord reached down immediately he didn't, he didn't go <laughs> eh, <whatever. laughs> I see bubbles <laughs> no I wish you would. That, yeah, that's, no Lord didn't do that when Peter cried out and said Lord save me he reached down and saved me see you don't have to you don't have to work to be saved you just got to cry out. Come on, somebody. You don't got to work. You don't have to sit there and try to save yourself. All you got to do is cry out. And the Lord responds. A humble and broken and contrite spirit, He will in no wise turn away. You ain't got to fight for your life. You ain't got to try to fight to save yourself. You ain't got to try to fight to walk on water. You just got to obey and trust it. Come on, somebody. You just got to cry out in desperation. Come on, somebody. I mean, that's all you got to do. Uh, they went back. They got into the boat. And the wind ceased. Isn't it funny? I don't know what this is. Number two, number three, wherever I'm at. You go back get the CD and figure it out yourself. But watch this because I don't have any notes. So here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. So here they get back into the boat and the wind ceased. See, even in the midst of the worst storm that you and I may ever face, when we're in the will of God, there's a peace that surpasses all understanding. Come on, somebody. Amen. That guards and keeps our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. The wind ceased. The wind stopped. And then all of a sudden there was this peace. Because he cried out. 
See, he, he, he started looking around and he realized in his own self, he looked around and he said, I can't do this. I'm not supposed to be doing this. Are you with me? It, it, it's not so much that he took his eyes off Jesus. He just, he had a moment where he realized his human weakness. He realized that in my flesh there's nothing good. I cannot do what I'm doing. Sure, he started looking at the winds and waves and all that stuff, but you understand what I'm saying? There are moments in our lives where you and I do the same thing. We see we're doing it. We know what God's called us to do, but we, we hit them storms and we hit them rough spots and we say, I just, I can't do that. We look at the storm, we look at the circumstance, and we say, you know what, I just can't. And you're right. We can't. But when we cry and say, God, save me. God, give me the grace to do what you call me to do. God, sustain me. Lift me up. Set my feet back on solid ground. We all have sinking moments in our lives. There is none righteous, no, not one. There is no one, amen, that can do what God's called them to do in their own strength. We gotta have his word. And we gotta have faith. Step out. He says, oh, you know, they get back into the boat. Now watch this, I'm wrapping it up. They get back into the boat. Then those who were in the boat came and worshiped him, not Peter, not Peter, they came and worshiped the Lord. And they said, truly, you are the Son of God. Now watch this. In Peter's failing, in Peter's failing, God was glorified Amen. because it was His strength that saved Him. Amen. It was God's strength that sustained Peter. It was God's hand that reached down and picked him back up. Amen. See, folks, we get too impressed with people. We get too impressed with churches. We get too impressed with TV personalities. We get too impressed with pastors. We get too impressed with evangelists. We get too impressed with prophets and apostles. And there's not a one of us out there that has not sunk a few times. <laughs> See, the Apostle Paul said it this way. He said, if I wanted to boast in the flesh, I could boast. I was born to this family. I did this and I did that and I'm the best at it all. He said, but all that's a bunch of dumb that I may know him. He says, I don't come with you with uh, per, uh, persuasive words and, and my intellect, but with the power of God and the demonstration of God's power. Why? So that your faith, listen to me, so that your faith doesn't rest in a man or a woman, but it rests in the power of God. See, knowing that Peter was saved, knowing that he couldn't do it on his own, but when he allowed the Word of God to be his anchor, when he allowed the Word of God to be his strength, amen, he could do the impossible. But when he started looking at his human limitations, he started looking at the influences around him and he, the, the storms and, and everything else, and he realized this is bigger than me. Come on, somebody. He began to sink. And the Word, the living Word, reached down and saved him. Some of us at times, we, we feel like we're sinking. We feel inadequate. I'm an inadequate father. I'm an inadequate mother. I'm an inadequate husband. I'm an inadequate wife. I'm an, I just I fail. I sink. I get frustrated. I'm an inadequate pastor. 
I'm an inadequate praise and worship leader. I'm an inadequate Sunday school teacher. I'm an inadequate deacon. I'm an inadequate this. I just, I can't, because it's just too much, and I feel like I'm failing. I'm not, I'm sinking. I feel overwhelmed. I feel distressed. I feel like I just... And that's when we just say, I know what you've called me to do. Save me. Save me. I need your help. Jesus reaches down, picks us up. The storm ceases. Peace comes. Contentment comes. We get that our wind back. Come on, somebody. Amen. We start to realize, we start, our trust is built. Our hope is, is refueled, knowing that in whom we have trusted, what He has called us to do, what He has begun in us, oh, He will complete it. So instead of trying to save myself, Instead of trying to stay above water in my own strength, I'm going to cry out to Him. Amen. And I'm going to allow Him to save me again and again and again. Because I sink from time to time. Can you say amen? Amen. Bow your heads with me this morning.